Well, we have reached Sunday evening, man. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, and, and before I begin this video, I have to say, man, there was two, uh, two questions about uh, the REITs thing that came up this past, uh, past week. And one was a benchmark. Somebody asked me if I can do like a benchmark uh, or how these are performing against like the S&P, uh, these, these 10. And I'm, I'm working on it. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Uh, I, I actually got it, uh, a benchmark working, but it only does individual stocks and you can go back to it. it anyway, I'm working on it. I'm not, a, I'm not a spreadsheet guru when it comes to these uh, spreadsheets, so I am learning. And the other question was, I wrote it down over here. Oh, CTO. Somebody asked me what my thoughts were on CTO. I did a brief uh, overview of it, but I haven't done it in, in depth. And, I, and honestly, just to be honest with you guys, I don't like to give out uh, my opinions as far as like these uh, ET, uh, REITs go or ETFs, because I do ETFs, because I do not want to be uh, influencing anybody in any way, shape, or form. That's something I do not do, because if you read what we do here, you can see that I am not a financial advisor. And I mean that. I, I, I don't want to influence anybody in any way, shape, or form. You need to do your own due diligence. You know, I, I don't mind saying, yo, yeah, I like that stock or no, but uh, I, I, again, I don't want to influence anybody. But I, I did do a, a brief, but I didn't do a deep dive into CTO. So I just wanted to start the video out with that. So, uh, well, let's just jump right in. As you will see below was the markets uh, for uh, uh, the week and in, uh, in history. Uh, let's jump straight into your votes. There were some more votes. Uh, and I appreciate that, guys. You guys are really killing it with this, this particular uh, voting. Uh, I think even better than the other two. Uh, I don't know. I have never really did a total vote on the other one. I have to check and see. It might be, I don't know, the uh, ETF uh, dividend one might be up there. But I put added in a total vote. You can just see how many votes have, uh, have have been done. It's 113 votes now. But still, we have O, Realty Income at 22 in the lead. Arbor in second place at 14. Uh, let's see. Stag in third place with 8. V Vici in uh, fourth place with 6. Let's go one more, and I'm hoping I don't mess this up, but it looks like WPC with five, which is tie with OHI and IRM. So we have a three-way tie for that position. I'm just double-checking here, so if I missed it, I am sorry. I did not mean to miss your read. Uh, so, yeah, I don't highlight these. It's just I'm just going off. I'm just winging it here, so on that one. So how did my little portfolio, my little REIT portfolio, that's, yeah, I got, well, uh, my REIT ETF. <laughs> So we got ten of them in here. Anyway, it's a little, it's a little ETF, right? Maybe not. Anyway, here we go, guys. Uh, week seven, and as always, you can see the first section uh, is my weekly deposit, how much uh, the share cost was at the time of purchase, and how much it bought at that time. Um, you can see next section is the total amount of shares that have been purchased so far, uh, my cost basis per each one of these uh, REITs. And then you can see my, my values for each one. And uh, all the way down there at the bottom, you can see now that it is $2,486.14, which is up $264.04 from last week. Uh, we were at 22.22.10 last week. Next section is the growth. And you can see uh, where we stand as far as, it's just a Christmas tree here. We got red and green. Um, and then on the last, uh, the next section is the uh, growth in dollars. And I'm still in the negative. But we do have some green, which is very nice to see. Uh, but we are down $16.99. And then lastly, in the uh, price appreciation area, it's a mixed bag as well. Uh, there is no all green or all red, but uh, you can see that there. And then the very, very end is the closing cost for each one of these REITs on Friday, this past Friday. So that is it. That's my little portfolio. It's uh, like I said, I, I expect it to be down. I mean, the market is down, so I expect it to be down. I just started the seven weeks ago in, in the midst of the markets being down. But all right, so at this point, we're going to jump over to Dave, let him go over the history. And I think he has another chart that he wants to share this week. It's all yours, Dave. Ah, you didn't call me Super Dave. He didn't call me Super Dave. You know, I just realized, man, these glasses need to be clean. Good Lord. <laughs> There's all kinds of fingerprints on there. Anyway, guys, let's just jump straight on into the uh, history chart. Boom. All right. I added in the six month, man. I eliminated the one day and kept uh, and added in the six month because that one day is just so it, it's not so it's not really not that important. So here we go, guys. In the last five days, who was the best performer? That would be land at a positive 5.73%. And the worst performer was two at a negative 3.41%. Uh, six month 
We have Mac as the worst performer at 49.86%, and the best performer was Vici at 9.7% positive. Year to date, IIPR, worst performer at a negative 56.38%, and the best performer, LTC, at 12.36% positive. Let's go out one year. We got IRM, best performer, 14.27% positive, and the worst performer was Mac at a negative 47.03%, and Mac's just going to carry it straight down the line, just so you guys know. Best performer in the three-year would be Land, uh, 102.16%, and uh, as I said, Mac, negative 72.97%. Five years out, let's go take a look at the five-year. IIPR, and I, like I think I said the week before and the week before that, will uh, is going to hold that slot for quite some time at 586.71%. And Mac, again, is the, the worst performer over the last five years at an 84.11%. There you got your 52-week low, your 52-week high. And uh, you can see here, this is one of the you're going to be looking at, uh, the estimated dividend and estimated yield doesn't seem to want to always uh, cooperate with these Google Sheets. Um, so I decided that I would try to build a sheet that would would hold that up a lot better. And I worked on it. We're going to show that next. But real quickly, just down at the bottom for everybody that is wondering why V and Q is on there, it's just a comparable that is an, an ETF, just so you guys can see how it compares against the rest of the uh, REITs in this list. So let's jump to this other chart. And I'm not sure exactly how this is going. I don't know if it's gonna be one-sided or it's gonna be the whole screen or if it's gonna scroll because I haven't had an opportunity to test it yet. But uh, you can see now that what I've done is we have the ticker all the way to the left. And in this next, next slot, I decide to go ahead and put in the company name. So that way everybody knew what company it is because some of these REITs are unknown to some people. Some of them were new to me. I didn't, I don't know every single REIT out there. So when uh, we, I started building uh, this, this uh, video series, uh, I started learning about even more REITs that I didn't know about. But then you can see in the next slot, you got the price category, uh, price uh, at, at, at current price, I'm sorry, I couldn't spit that out. And then you have your annual dividend and your dividend yield. Obviously, Cushman uh, doesn't pay a dividend, so there wouldn't be anything there. I decided to add in the volume so we guys can see about how much volume, and that's the average volume. I, I almost positive 100% that I put average. I should have wrote that at the top. And then at the very end, I decided to do a market cap. Um, not big on the way this chart does the market cap because it just kind of just scrolls all the numbers like that, and you don't even, you know, it, it's hard to read that. But uh, I, I'm actually in the moment. At the moment, I'm, I'm talking to give you guys more time. That's what I'm doing to see. So you guys, if it's scrolling, it gives you more time to look at it. But um, I'm working on another chart that I'm hoping works even better than this one. Uh, it's it's just like um, it's a learning process, man. I'm I'm, I'm learning as I go. So there you go. I will end it on that, and uh, I hope that helps out a little bit better. I will continue to work on this and build better charts, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll guess I'll turn it back over to Dave. It's all yours, Dave. Well, I thank you, Dave. I appreciate it, man. I, now, this chart is the ex-dividend day chart, and I'm actually working on another chart. I have been saying it for the last few weeks that I'm trying to incorporate all those ETFs that Dave just went over, uh, ETFs, REITs, uh, he just went over and making and trying to do a complete spreadsheet with all the ex dividend dates, uh, and I, I I actually have one built, but I'm having some issues with it. Like I said, I'm learning with these spreadsheets, and it just it once you start getting in these spreadsheets, you just get straight down the rabbit hole, man. It, <laughs> <laughs> this is never ending, man. But anyway, well, this is what I have so far because this is a manually uh, inputted uh, spreadsheet that I do. You know, I do it. It's none. It's none of it's auto. Uh, so I have to check this constantly, once a week at least. Uh, so here you go. We have ex dividend dates. Uh, nothing new. So nothing's highlighted. But we do have some pay dates coming up on the seven fifteen. So we have uh, realty income on seven fifteen. We have stag store and WPC also on the fifteenth. And uh, from right there, you can see straight across what the current price is, uh, the estimated yield, uh, current price again, we had that in the other sheet, but you can see your current uh, yield, estimated yield, estimated annual dividend, and then you can see the current dividend payment uh, all the way at the end. 
And like I said, I'm really working hard, man. I've been spending a lot of time on these spreadsheets. You guys have no idea. It's it's I'm like I'm back in school <laughs> trying to learn these spreadsheets, man. Trying to make all this work so much better uh, and, and, and make it more uh, auto-filling, obviously, but to make it more entertaining. I give you guys more information. So I, I, am, I am constantly working on those spreadsheets. Um, so last, well not lastly, let's go into the dividends. There was uh, a couple dividends we have uh, so far. We have Iron Mountain this month at $1.47 and it bought 0 .03 of itself and uh, that dividend was uh, $61.85. We have all the way over to the end there, WPC uh, was $2.10 which bought 0 .07 of itself and that was $1.05. Basically, dollar six. Uh, I was trying to figure out what was the best way to say that. So, so far this month, July, I've been paid three dollars and fifty-seven cents. So, if you go straight across July, you can see that on the very, very end to the right, at the very bottom, you can see the grand total of what I've been paid so far in this little portfolio of five dollars and five cents. And uh, like I said, we just started this, so it, now it's going to start. You know, it's going to start rolling. Uh, and then for those that are new, dividends in the one first column in the green uh, will add up at the bottom. You can see straight down on Arbor. Well, let's take one that's got, a, that's got some payments in there. Let's just take uh, Iron Mountain, for instance. You go straight down, you can see it's $1.47. In the next category, it'll add up the total amount of share. So over time, you'll see it, how much of a share it's bought of itself uh, with the uh, drip going on there. So I, I thought that would be very interesting to see, as well as this is what I do in all my videos, because uh, it's just an, it gives, it's an inspiration, man. You see stuff grow, and that's you know that's what my video channel is all about, anyway. Trying to inspire um, uh, people to uh, to invest, because uh, I started. And those that don't know, I started extremely late in life, uh, and I, I regret every single minute of it. And now I am playing uh, catch up. I am dumping everything I can into the markets and some other things as well. Um, so I can retire. Hopefully, like I always say it, you guys may know it. I'm a beat, beat, uh, beating a dead horse. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Eight years, hopefully. Uh, ten years uh, is probably more realistic. But eight years, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping eight years I can retire. So down here below, you guys can see who has been in the lead and who has been um, in, in the last place slot. And uh, I have to say, Vici took over the first place slot from O from two weeks in a row. But Vici has been in the first place slot uh, before on June 3rd. Uh, so we have Vici, O, O-H-I, P-L-D, Store, W-P-C, Land, I-R-M, A-B-R, and Stag all the way at the end. And it was nice to see... Arbor come out of that last place slot because it was in there for four weeks in a row. And then now the, the, the question is, will it continue to uh, pull up the chart there a little bit? Or is it going to just hang down there at the end? Uh, well, I hate seeing stag, but somebody's got to be in last place. You know, I like all these REITs. I, that's why I'm putting money into them. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be if I didn't, didn't like any of these. Um, but, uh, you know, somebody's got to be in last place. Somebody's going to be in first place. That's just the way it works. So for, there you go, seven weeks, man, seven weeks, getting ready to go into two months next week. I think I am going in with a uh, another $25 buy for each one of these, so that's $250 more dollars going to be contributed into this, uh, this portfolio. All right, so that is a wrap, man. Um, this is the part where I go, will you please smash that like button for me? You don't have to smash it, though. I always say in all the videos, you can just... Press it down there if you like. You, 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 you know, just slide that mouse over and hit it by accident. Would be great. <laughs> now, honestly, guys, if you like the video, think about giving me a like. And, uh, and if you're new, think about subscribing. If you're not new and you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. And we like to have a little fun here. Try to have fun. And uh, and lastly, man, there's a couple of little links down in there. I'm not a big, uh, you know, uh, whatever the word is. But down here below is uh, we got a uh, Gemini link for those that are into, interested in starting and opening a crypto uh, account. Uh, or I have uh, a, dub, a M1 portfolio, which is one of my videos is M1. The other two are both in Fidelity. But M1's a really great platform for those that are interested in that type of platform. Um, definitely look into your platforms. Each one works a little differently. And uh, But down again, down there below, if you're interested in M1. Helps you, helps me. We both walk away happier people. Yeah, that, that's right. Man. That's right. So anyway, I guess I'll wrap this up because I have a tendency to talk forever. Uh, and I like to thank my special guest here. I mentioned the other one. Uh, we have uh, Popeye. Uh, for those younger ones that don't know who that is, maybe. 
<laughs> it's a cartoon, obviously. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll shut up, let it go. All right, guys, I appreciate you as always. I truly do. Thank you for tuning in and watching. And uh, I'll see you guys right back here next week. Actually, on Saturday mornings, div, uh, cover call ETF comparison. Sunday mornings, dividend ETF comparisons. And right back here, Sunday nights for the read comparison. I guess I'll stop there. I'll see you guys. I'll keep talking. I will. This keeps happening. I don't know why. Are you still here? Uh, go on, man. I'm, I'm serious. You, you, you can go now. I, I swear, I'm done. I really am. Bye. See you next week.